Hello everybody, welcome to a new show of Woodman Live, the show for and from the Woodman server and for Planetside 2, of course. My name is IP Kleika and I am, you guessed it, from the Iron Pulse outfit. And now we have another new episode and obviously we have new guests because seeing the same few faces every single episode, that's just boring and we don't do boring. So, who do we have? We have from Tor5, Hood42, from FHM, 3 z and from the 501st, we have Hala, or Hala Hala. Anyway, I am giving each of these uh, three people 10 seconds to introduce themselves in their outfit. Let's start with Hood from Tor5. Your 10 seconds to introduce yourself start now. Uh, hello, I'm Hood from Tor. Uh, Tor's big organization. We have lots of games. We do mandatories on or ops on Tuesdays and Sundays. Okay, and that was Tor damn. 5. Oh, sorry, sorry, that was yours. You don't get Man, another cool. chance. Man, you don't fine. get another chance. Now, let's go into the NC side. FHM Freezy, your 10 seconds to talk about your outfit and yourself. Go. I am Freezy from FHM, part of the Forget and Honor gaming community. Um, interested in joining our NC outfit on Woodman? Pop your head in and join. Alrighty, that was FHM. And now to jump onto the TR, the favorites of oppression and, I guess, fascism? We'll talk about that later. 500 First Hala, your 10 seconds to talk about yourself and your outfit. Go! Hi, my name is Hala. I'm an air officer from the 500 First Sky Guardians, and we are an outfit that focuses mainly on galaxy dropping, and we also have a dedicated air section that we run most times as well. Alrighty, so now you guys know who I'm talking to, but now you want to know what we're talking about. Well, obviously, the big topic this week is the recommended servers for factions, which has very quickly changed the landscape of Woodman, while the VS had a huge number of players in the past. Now, suddenly the TR beforehand woefully underpopped is now very very massively i wouldn't say overpopped but i guess well balanced popped so um what is the tr doing with all these new players how has this changed the game for the other two factions those are going to be the big topics and we're going to jump right in and i'm going to ask you hala because you are our tr representative how is the tr coping with their new top dog status when it comes to population has the game gotten better, or has it actually gotten worse? It feels like to us that it's got a bit worse, because since there's such a big influx of new players, they're obviously very much unguided because they don't have an outfit and inexperienced as well. So it feels like we have a lot of numbers, but not in the right places, and it's difficult to get things done. And the outfits are currently trying to get a lot of these guys recruited, but um, since it's coming on us quite quickly, the TR recommended server, it's uh, almost caught us by surprise. And we're working quickly with all the outfits I've been talking, and uh, we're, we're trying to get um, bigger recruitment going to get all these new people in. But for us right now, it feels just the same, or maybe even worse, just because of the huge influx of inexperienced players, and the fact that right now, it doesn't feel like they're playing to a, a, such a high quality as the players from beforehand and the overpop isn't really helping right now but hopefully in the future it'll help to balance things out. So how are the two other factions seeing this? I mean Hala currently says that not that much has changed apart from getting shot by newbie players. How are you guys noticing uh, the change and how are you noticing those uh, low-level players coming towards you? Let's start with FHM. Uh, well, quite frankly, myself, I've seen a lot more easy kills coming along from the TR. So it's much more fun fighting them than the Wanus. And yeah, there's really not much difference from. It's quite equal now, the numbers in skills. We see a Wanu population that is quite uh, similar to the NC, whilst the TR has a higher population there very unskilled and easy to kill, so it's rather balanced. 
once the TR starts getting some training and know the game, I guess we're gonna see a change to that and a more TR dominated area. I take it uh, the VS kinda has the same view, Hood? Um, well, when we had the high population, um, I, I can't speak for all outfits. Uh, I think I lost people here. Hood, could you repeat what you said? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you, thank you. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, generally um, we weren't happy with the high numbers um, because we'd go to a base, and especially on Indar, um, we would just overswarm the base and then just have to sit around with the Zerg um, quarantining their spawn rooms and stuff. Um, but logging in the past few days um, we are kind of the underdogs again which is where I think we should be and um, we've got 26 in our population at the moment we're outnumbered and it's oh sorry you're gone again yeah well this is this is a shame. Just cut off I don't know if it's on your part or not um it might be maybe my push talks a bit weird maybe okay could you finish your sentence yeah you said it's <laughs> different but uh, yeah, so basically, uh, now that we have a low population again, we're the underdogs, um, and yeah, it, it's a more challenging fight. Like, um, yeah, it's just more fun being outnumbered and outgunned. You've got more to fight for, and the game generally forces you to play more tactically and stuff. Mm. Now, the thing is, Hala, you said that you have all these new players and so on that they're not really helping so the pop isn't really changing anything for you so why did the pop though when the Vanu were getting it why did it change so much for the faction I'm just gonna throw this in here and any of you can pick it up um, ah, well, no the one it. Hood, there we go yeah um I mean, are, are you asking like how when the Vanu had the overpop, how did we manage yeah. to just dominate so much with it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, well, I don't know. Um, I, it's just all the outfits were just working together. Um, comms was really respectful. Um, I mean, uh, towards the beginning of Planet Side, when it was first released, uh, Leaders Comms was a bit of a mess, and other than Chicken Curry's occasional. Uh, orders thing, um, which was a bit annoying at the start, um, was, yeah, like, everyone was like, oh, leaders comms, it's really rubbish. Um, but, you know, people started using it more, um, and yeah, I mean, nothing but respect for Curry's now. He kind of has one of the largest outfits in the game, knows what he's doing, um, and he's like, he kind of set a precedent where if someone asked for help, he was like, you know what, we're going to be there. Um, and I don't know, it, it was just good. Uh, loads of other outfit members in general. Uh, Curry's is just the main one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's kind of, I, I kind of put him as like the uh, the the public leader, as it were. Just uh, if, if you're a random person uh, or a puppy joining Vanu for the first time, uh, you'll see the orders come up and you'll be like, oh, I can go there. Um, so yeah, it was just quite useful for both pubbies and for outfits. I also think that uh, some of the guys who joined the Warners back when they had a higher population uh, were guys who came from other factions uh, just joining the Warners to try out uh, the stuff that the Warners got. So hmm. they did have a basic understanding of the game already. Whilst the guys who now come to TR are all really new to the game. Well, what is the TR doing to get those people up to snuff? I mean, that's always something that I ask uh, basically every episode. And uh, we know about the elementary beginning things, but what, for example, does the 500 first do to uh, take advantage of this new pop? We're currently trying to run as many public platoons as we possibly can to try and hoover up as much as this. Uh, massive influx of new players as we can. So we try to run our public platoons during the day and even on our event nights where we play a lot more seriously we try to have maybe a squad set up where we can have uh, random people joining that as well and we have an experienced person leading it and they play with 
the platoon so it gives them a good feel of how we operate and uh, how we play and we find that makes them more likely to um, to want to join us if they see us playing very organized instead of a, a daytime platoon but the daytime platoons do help get a lot of people in and we started discussing as well some different methods and trying to get people in but since the overpop set us very quickly we're, uh, we're trying to get things done as quick as possible but we've also just really started talking about these things which is, is making it a bit difficult for us but the 501st we are just trying to run public platoons to get people into our outfit as quick as possible while all these new players are still there and trying to get hold of them before they get bored of the game because mm. they're playing lone wolf or things like that and they don't really get the full experience of the game if they're not playing with an outfit. So now we talked about how to play with the overpop. I also like talked about that in an earlier episode with the uh, with the VS guys. Now, let's ask the VS and the NC, how do you play against an overpop? Obviously the NC has the best view on that because you guys had to deal with the Vanu overpop and now the TR overpop. So, how do you play against it? Do you play differently? Um, well, we try to divide up and hit uh, several areas at the same time because if we're gonna stay in one fight against the one, for instance, before, uh, they're gonna have more population joining in on the, their side. Whilst if we try with strategical maneuvers, try to hit several areas organized and just fastly move over more forces to a different front, we might outmaneuver the the bigger population. Okay, well, uh, Hood, um, why don't we go over to you and you give us some insight on how you feel that the Vanu are now fighting against the TR. Are you actually fighting against an overpop or are you fighting against more of an equal force? Yeah, so uh, if I'm platoon leading, I'll specifically go for a base where we are outnumbered um, and try and use some sort of strategic strike. Um, the best way, um, kind of if you're fighting a tank Zerg, then you just galaxy drop over the top and put infantry on the point so that in order to counter that they have to get out of their tanks in order to uh, get the point back which just delays them really I mean if they've spent time getting tanks together putting infantry into those tanks and then you get on the point and they're like oh right, everyone out of the tanks again walk back over to the point kill them take the point back back into our tanks that's a good five minutes that you've delayed them um, so if a zerg wants to like uh, just zerg up and there's not really much you can do about it you just want to use delay tactics uh, like if a tank zerg is moving across an open field you want to like uh, hit them with artillery from far away so that they're forced to take cover move around a bit and then they get caught up in between the bases where they're not really doing much as a zerg so it's not all that different from how you've always played yeah, I mean, we we always use, or I like to use, sneaky, devious strategies and try and get behind enemy lines and play mind games with the enemy um, rather than just kind of brute forcing it up and just getting a lot of tanks and throw the, throwing them at the enemy. Um, Does the lattice system actually impact you with that? Uh, quite heavily, yeah. Uh, the lattice system pretty much got rid of that. Uh, like... Uh, do you know Gravel Pass? Uh, there's the little bit between, from Crossroads, if you go down, there's a tiny little alleyway from Broken Arch to Gravel Pass, and that used to be one of our main, like, our outfit would use that all the time once we'd got uh, Broken Arch, rather than trying to get to a tech plant. Um, bases like uh, Rust Mesa, Mesa Comms, which are just like on top of a mountain that you can't get to with tanks are a favourite as well because we could just galaxy drop onto them, hold them with maxes, and then it wouldn't matter how many forces the enemy had, you could just put a 10 people with maxes um, up there and the enemy would just flow into you. Um, so the latter system has really kind of punished that style of gameplay, um, which takes out a lot of the strategy of the game, I think. Hmm. Well, so what exactly do you do when the lattice system puts you in a position where you think that you're forced into fighting in a specific way against, for example, overwhelming force? 
Uh, I'm just going to throw that in the round, whoever wants to pick it up. Um, for us, what we try to do is, if we find ourselves coming against a superior force on one of the lattice links, we, to the best of our ability, we try to find somewhere somewhere else that's more friendly to the size of uh, platoon we're running at the time. So if we're coming up against about three Vanu platoons in one one uh, route, and um, we only have maybe a couple of squads ourselves, and maybe a few squads of randoms backing us up, um, personally we'd either try to harass them between bases, as Hood from Tall 5 said that they do, or we try and find an area where we could be more effective with the numbers that we have. I take it the uppers are kind of trying the same thing, or...? Um, well, if, if you're forced to fight a zerg and they, they've already quarantined a base, there's hardly anything you can do unless you have a very well-organized tank force, which is almost impossible in my... And uh, you cut out again. Yeah, I, I saw that that was my push to talk, so... Haha! <laughs> um... I, I will definitely change that in momentarily now. Anyway, so if you are, yeah, if we're if you're trying to fight some uh, a zerg that's already quarantined a base, uh, approaching them head on is very very difficult to do. Um, but what you can do is you can say, you know what, we've lost this base. Go to the next base. We're just gonna meet them there with whatever rocket launchers you've got, and just focus fire each vehicle as it comes one at a time. Because normally Zergs will just, be, you know, the the someone will be like, oh, got my points, I'm moving out, I'm the first one on the scene, and then they get blown up, and next person comes along, they get blown up. And you don't manage to stop the whole Zerg, but you definitely chip away at the numbers, so... Yeah, and getting rid of the enemy's tanks, Sundays, and the aircraft before they hit the next base is really the best strategy of uh, hitting a Zerg really hard. So, does the NC have specific approaches to the game at the moment because I always read about stuff where it's like oh the NC rather fights the TR because it's so boring to fight the VS or because the VS is so overpopped but now that the TR is overpopped and the VS has tons of population what is the NC doing? Oh, well at the moment I don't mind fighting uh, the Wanus or the TR. It's fun fighting both of them uh, the TR because they have a lot of puppies that are easy to kill and the one is because they're rather equal to us in numbers so it's good fights all around for us right now whilst back in the days when the one is had an overpopulation it tended to get a bit surgy from their side and we got hit really hard getting locked down in bases really fast and, and having to pull back, pull back, pull back rather than having a good fight. Um, so is there any specific part of organization from the NC though? Like towards fighting the TR or towards fighting the VS? Uh, other than our joint operations, uh, not really. Hmm. I will say that um, like one of the main strategies for uh, the VS if you're outnumbered is just to call for reinforcements and the response time of the other outfits is amazing specifically on alerts as well like on alerts if you're like oh, by the way there's there's a platoon here and they're coming for the biolab we need to defend someone will just be straight back like two platoons are heading your way in 10 minutes kind of thing just hold out for 10 minutes and it's like you, you no longer have to win uh, the beat the entire Zerg, you have to delay them for 10 minutes and that's a nice little like mini objective for a squad or something like that. And also when the cavalry does arrive you just get that kind of awesome feeling of teamwork and working together and stuff. Hmm. Is th this is how the TR has been always doing it, right? Is th has the overpop actually thrown a bit of a wrench into uh the communication and the coordination of TR outfits? Um, well, I'd just like to say first that personally I don't think the communication between the TR outfits is as good as the Vanu outfits because the Vanu outfits have a, a great coordination setup and personally I'm jealous of it but um, the TR outfits are communicating but it's still something we're trying to work on to get even better communication but um, some of you might have seen on the planet side uh, woodman forums there's a, 
massive thread going on with um, I was trying I was discussing with each other trying to get better ways of communicating and things like that but um, we do try to help each other out but sometimes it it just does feel like there's not many outfits on command chat at the time so it may seem like we're working together very well but sometimes um, the communication on command chat isn't the way it should be really um, th there isn't enough of it sometimes yeah, and then there's the problem with the command chat that there's also smaller outfits with leaders that aren't really that experienced in the game and uh, they don't really know what they're requesting, what they should be doing. So I know quite a few officers who have chosen to just mute all the command chats. We've had a few problems with that as well. With um either some people just buying command chat and uh, trolling on it basically or um, you do get un inexperienced people who um, they aren't very pleasant over it sometimes and it, it does get a tad annoying and I, I personally have muted it a few times as well just because um, it, it feels very useless at some points but other times it is very useful it's something as, as the TR as a whole we, we're trying to work on and it has been getting much better recently it's just that uh, it's taken time to set up, really. So, I'm just going to throw this in there as an open discussion for the three of you. How important is the coordination in a faction? And how easy is it to do? Um, I think it's extremely important to coordinate the faction, because otherwise you, get, you can have people all concentrated in one area, whereas uh, areas have been lost in another, but if you keep the coordination up, you can have your forces evenly spread where they should be, and then also have reactionary forces so that when there is problems, they can get to the, the problem areas. That's uh, that, that's my personal feeling on it there. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well, completely. Frizzy, no feelings toward it? Uh, I, I just agree that the communication is very important. No, I meant uh, Freezy. He oh, just, right, uh, sorry. He has info. Bad. Sorry, lost connection there for a second. Oh, okay, so you didn't even hear what the other said. No, sorry. Oh, okay. Well, we were just uh, they were just saying that it is very, very important and it's not that easy to do, to have coordination and communication in your yes. faction. It's really, really important to have. We see during all the joint ops we've had so far that we have a really great opportunity to do something amazing. For example, this last Sunday we actually took the TR's uh, cap on Inda and we capped the uh, server whilst there was an alert on. Uh, it's things like that you can't pull off if you don't have coordination with the other outfits. You concentrate on different targets and you get more population on one continent than the others. You can do so much damage. So, how do you properly start coordination between outfits? Do you just use a command channel. I mean, we just heard that command channel gets uh, abused by some people who don't even care about leading or anything. So how do you start out with this? Because some people out there might be listening and there might be outfit leaders or officers and they're wondering how can I get proper diplomatic relationships going on? Um, I think you can't force it. Like, the best way to let it happen is you kind of already need to be winning a bit so everyone's in a, a bit of a good mood or it needs to at least be like a viable fight that you might be able to win um, and if you've got that kind of borderline success loss you like you with so close but not quite um, and you, and sorry and then you just say something useful in like command chat which could be something as simple as like uh, oh well useful would be uh, saying where the enemy is doing and what the enemy is going 
because like people don't really care what your outfit is doing if you're like hey we just took this space they're like well i can see that on the map i don't really care that it was you that did it what people really care about is there's an enemy tank surge heading for this base um and they're just at this other base so if you go here someone can counter it like we can't do it but there's some useful information on enemy activity um, and then hopefully someone out there will pick it up and say you know thanks and then anyone else who's listening in will be like oh people are being respectful on command chat and it will kind of just happen naturally um, but I don't think you can really force it too much yeah I agree with Hood there that um it is something that do it does although command chat can be abused sometimes and it can get a bit annoying the cooperation between outfits it begins and happens constantly on command chat and over time, when you hear people speaking in it, you you learn their voice and you associate their name with an outfit and uh, you get to know each other really and you can make some friends over the command chat as well and when that starts happening, the coordination becomes much better because people recognise each other and they have trust in each other as well that if they ask for an outfit on their side to help them, they know that they will try their best to help them and hopefully bring them to some some sort of victory. So it's basically you just have to put yourself out there. Yes, I, I, I think that putting yourself out there and other people putting themselves out there and just getting to know each other in command chat helps with the co cooperation greatly because you just get to know each other and you trust each other. If each one of you could ask for one feature to make communication in general or also just command chat related or whatever just communication easier in the game what would you like to have added um i'd very much like to see um the text based uh command chat improved because you can do slash l and uh, talk on the leaders chat just through text um, but I'd very much like to see a, a coloured regional one, so like Amorish comes up in green, uh, Esamir comes up with blue, and it says like Amorish order, Esamir order, and you can have either a request or a report, and then you can report enemies doing something on Esamir at a specific base. Uh, just because like if I'm fighting on the field and I'm trying to platoon lead, I'm listening to two or three voices already, and trying to throw information around and then I have leaders comms on top of that just butting in and then I can't hear anyone and it just becomes a horrible mess uh, so having a text-based reference that I can like look at um, when I need it kind of thing um, and just kind of say ah in the last two minutes uh, SME needs help at this base and it seems there's a big tank zerg on here um, and the color thing is mainly like if I'm shooting and playing as well, uh, the color thing will come up and like subconsciously you'll just kind of learn to ignore the purple ones or whatever if you're on the wrong continent and you just learn to be like, ah, green thing, that's related to Amorish, so better concentrate on that. Yeah, same goes with the voice chat. Uh, once, when we get more continents, it's going to be even more important that we have a clear line where it's coming from so we don't have to listen to the other continents command chats it would be great if you could uh, just concentrate on hearing one continent's command chat rather than uh, hearing command chat coming over that they need to uh, help at uh, SME ramp station when you're fighting over at Inda hmm. so maybe something like a continent wide voice chat but a game-wide text chat. Yeah, that, that would definitely be really good. Hmm. Hala, what, what do you have up your sleeve? I'd quite like to see some sort of interactive leader map. So instead of the map function that leaders have right now to just basically right-click and put down a, a request reinforcements thing, which isn't very, isn't very visible or complex, um, I'd quite like to see some sort of interactive map where the leaders could all use it at the same time and say they could put like a little symbol saying with, just with their outfit tag and put them on one base and then they'd see the other outfits on another bases. It would something that would, it'd be difficult to implement but something like that would greatly help with uh, coordinating who's in what place 
and maybe where they're going to next or what their plans are just to help the coordination more because trying to explain things like that over leader chat can get a bit long-winded and it does it does clog up the voice comms quite a lot so uh, I'd like to see an interactive map for just for the leaders where you can you can put your outfit at a certain place and say where you're going to be moving next and roughly what situation you're in maybe add a little note mm. to your your tag on the map I actually the, think that the website ps2maps.com is actually working on something like that, but I'm not sure if they're really continuing it or not. And obviously, we would like to have an in game thing that would work. Yeah, uh, if Come on, the, NC, the NC actually has a map working that we're using during the joint stops where we place markers where we are, and uh, that way we keep ourselves updated where all the other outfits are heading. Oh, are it's you really one great. Of the, uh, are you using one of the publicly available maps in uh, on the browser? I'm not sure who has made it or how he's made it, but it's working it, and it's really a nice feature, but it would be great to have it integrated into the game so you wouldn't have to have a side, uh, a different uh, screen where you actually move the markers. Yeah, somebody posted on our Outfit Forms a program, like you were saying, Frezzy, where you could... Um, basically what I described, but an uh, external program. Just the, the problem with that, as you pointed out, is um, it's basically you need a second screen to work that effectively, which not everybody has, and not everyone wants to get just to be able to be effective in coordinating the different outfits. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same program, but I know Advanced Tactical Center uh, does something similar to what you're describing, but I'm not sure if it's that program that you're you are, are actually using. So basically all of you guys want something which just brings the leader channel more together, whether it be in text form for text chat, a better, more continent specific voice chat, or a, a map that you can actually draw on for other people. So there are actually some good ideas, I hope that uh, maybe Higby is listening. Come on so Sony, say, listen to us. Listen to us. Um, <laughs> it's like, I, I would actually rather see some more um, smaller squad dynamics though because um, in our current platoon setup uh, we have fire teams that are within the squads uh, with the idea, idea being that you can within the 12 people you have two groups of six and the uh, two groups of six can fulfill different roles on a base like one of you quarantine the spawn room while one of you um, gets the point or one of you is going to be looking after the Sundra with some tanks and the other group is actually going to go to the point and stuff. Um, so it'd be quite nice to uh, to have some sort of micro-management tools and stuff um, because I know just from experience that people get confused about like who they're meant to be following around and where they're meant to be and like what the current objective is and stuff. So I'd like to see some better micromanagement tools, but that's personally just me. I agree with Hood there, because we also run a almost identical fire team system in our infantry squads, where we have two groups of six, each with a, a commander who's led by the squad leader, and we find that the our team speak can get very cluttered, because we have a channel for each squad, and when you've got fire team leaders, try to dish out things, both of them at the same time, it can get a bit cluttered and micromanagement in-game would make things a lot easier, especially maybe just some extra waypoints. That would be a, a great start. Oh yeah, yeah. one thing about that, if the platoon leader could see all of the current squad waypoints that squad leaders have put up, that would change everything. And it true. would be so easy as well. I also feel that the smoke is a good idea, but the way it works is just badly implemented. It doesn't render really far, and uh, yeah, it's, once it's again, 300 the... meters. But for yeah. me, what also, what's also a big problem is that I can see the smoke that someone else has put down. So if 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 we both are running squads, and I've put down green smoke, and another squad leader puts down green smoke, and then I say there is an enemy Sundra at the green smoke, then my guys are going, which one? <laughs> it's just a bit. Eh. 
Then 300 meters is really too short. I wish it would be longer, especially as I run uh, air squad. It's nice to know when they say there's an enemy thunderer at the green smoke, mm. and you come in with your reaver ready to hit that, and it doesn't render until you're really next to it. I so, feel that, in in my personal opinion, I feel that they added the smoke in... In, in, in a way that they thought, okay, like, squad leaders or people can use that while fighting inside a base, you know, like, like in, a, in a smaller area, which is why the 300 meters work, and they can use it to mark specific stuff, which is a good idea, but the problem is they had to implement that cooldown because otherwise people would just spam it, and since everyone can see it, it, you know, there would be, the, the whole fucking map would be covered in it. But that also kind of just completely destroys the proper use for it. I mean, they basically gave us more waypoints than the big one. Uh, but they made them so awkward to use and, and, and so hard to use that no one does. On this topic, actually, a post was just put up on the about Game Update 13, 15 minutes ago. And they're talking about more markers for a platoon leader so squad squad specific markers that you can give to each squad uh, as well as their squad markers so that's something that Higby just put up on the yeah, they must there. be listening to us now the cool thing is that we're a live show and I actually just found something which I just linked to all of you guys here in the channel on, on TeamSpeak uh, I'm also gonna link it in the chat for the radio give me just a sec there we go. Now this is a picture, or rather multiple pictures, of apparently the implants which are going to be added to the game. Now the thing is, we heard before that implants are supposed to be consumable items that can be used for a limited period of time. It's equipped per loadout and has a limited duration. They're not saying yet if these are just with station cash or with certs or whatever. So we're not going to talk about that. But just look at these implants and let's go through them and let's throw in our, um, you know, like our opinions of them. Uh, already, okay. EMP shielding is completely useless. <laughs> I think I've been EMP grenaded well, let's, once. Let's go through it from the <laughs> yeah. start. Let's, we're, I'm just going to... I'm just going to read out one of the implants, and then you guys can just throw your opinions in. We're starting out with Awareness, which automatically spots enemies who damage or kill you, and it also automatically spots enemies that you damage. I think it could be useful in this, the second part of the description where it's spotting people that you damage, because that means you, you're not having to constantly hit your Q key to spot people. Whereas if you damage somebody, you instantly spot them as well. But the the first part, where the especially for infantry, if your enemies are getting spotted when you're getting hit by them, usually because infantry is quite very quick with little battles, you might you're you're probably dead. But when you can when somebody's spotted and you're dead, it's it is useful to your for your squad, but um not so much useful for yourself. So it feels like a very squad based thing. But if, it's, if it works in the air, it's going to be great, because then you at least know where they're hitting you from. So you could retaliate, because at least there you have a chance to actually fight back. Yeah. Uh, by I, the way, sorry, just, just a quick update. I just read, by the way, that implants are going to be bought by certifications and station cash. So we're not going to talk about that, but just to make it clear. Um, okay, uh, keep going. Yeah, so uh, with awareness, I, I definitely like that. Um, and then I'd probably just have that on my heavy, my frontline heavy, who's constantly just being the first one on the field and dying. But don't worry, I have my medics who are there to <laughs> revive me again. But yeah, that, that seems quite useful. So the next one we have is called Battle Hardened, which reduces the camera shake from all explosions. And it also reduces the flinch when you're hit by enemy fire. Now, quick note, uh, the flinch was actually reduced a few months back from uh, how high it was before when the game released and so on. So now you have an implant to reduce it even more. Uh, it's all right, <laughs> maybe. I, I don't think it's going to be as useful compared to the, the awareness one we just discussed because mm. personally I don't have many problems at all with flinch as you said they 
they reduced the flinch um, not that long ago and it doesn't I don't feel like it affects me very much it feels like it'd be a very if some if it did affect if it did affect somebody quite personally like uh, if they had trouble with the camera shaking and things like that obviously it'd be good but and from my experience I I haven't had problems with flinch that much yeah and the camera shaking from explosion doesn't really last that long and doesn't happen that often not enough to actually have an implant for I, I can see it's only real use if you're um, specializing in dump fire rockets um, against tanks because then you are going to be in and around explosions quite a lot and you need to be quite accurate with the dump fire rockets but even then if you're still getting some camera shake then the reduction doesn't really matter you just need to time it better in the first place so yeah meh hmm next up we have the emblem called clear vision it protects you against concussion and flash grenade effects and someone in the chat of the radio just actually asked a very good question can maxis use implants because a max that's immune against to flash grenades and concussion that seems pretty strong yeah concussion grenades are one of the my favorite things i've maxed out grenade bandolier and concussion grenades for my heavy um but i don't they're not used against me often enough I use them against enemies loads, but not against me, I hardly ever see it, so I'd probably ignore that one. Yeah, they're really underused. I don't understand why not more squads use them. It's a great weapon to use, throwing in a concussion or flashbang, and then running in with your team. But at the moment, yeah, as you said, not many use them, so I wouldn't get that implant. I think it depends on they say protects but it's not very clearly defined we don't know if it's protects as in nullifies and completely um takes it away or if it just has a lesser effect on you um i think that's something that we'd have to wait and see the full effect of it if it if it does completely remove the effects or if it just nullifies them i uh, sorry uh, just um reduces the effect of them but you still get some of the effect because concussion and flash grenades if used properly are extremely effective and you can catch a whole room out if you uh, if you get the, the right placement of it. I would like to point out that you can actually use this if it protects you completely for example as an offensive tool. You can be a heavy with a concussion grenade and you can literally flow, throw a concussion grenade at your own feet yeah, that that's pretty deadly, actually. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> your light assault with flash grenades, you don't have to wait for it to explode, you just throw it while you're running into the room. Yeah, and if you got three of them, then you, as soon as it runs out, yeah. pop another one, and you're like, Yeah, All you right, just pop another and another, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that, that would be... Yeah, that's pretty deadly. If it, if it did work like that, that would be used and abused. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, especially I, the concussion grenade. I mean, it's such a quick affair to throw it. But obviously, when the guy comes around the corner and you throw it, you're going to hit yourself. So it's kind of wasted. But if you're actually immune to it, that really seems strong. But we'll see. Next up, we already kind of talked about this. Uh, there's one called EMP shielding, which protects you against EMP grenade effects. Uh, I think we can all agree that EMP grenades are pretty much never used. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. In my outfit, we got we got used against it once, I think. And it's almost like, oh, my screen is broken or something. It stopped working. Help me. <laughs> I was like, no, no, we've been EMP yeah. grenade. It's like, oh? Well, I guess we can just gloss over this one because it's pretty much the same as clear vision. But again, you can technically also use it offensively if it actually protects you. Slap it on your infiltrator, run into a group of enemies uh, cloaked, throw the MP grenade, everyone loses their shields and stuff. Could work. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We have enhanced targeting. It enables an enhanced targeting HUD that displays the health of any spotted enemy that you target. It also increases the range of the IFF system from 8 meters to 25 meters. I, I would say that's slightly useful, maybe? For yeah, inventory, I'd say not so useful, because sure, if you know your health, your enemy has low health, it'll be, you know it'll be an easier fight, but you still don't want to un underestimate them, because even though they have low health, they can still take you out pretty easily. Um, I think for infantry, it wouldn't make much of a difference, but for vehicle um, fights, I think that would make a huge difference because, as we all know, before 
you used to be able to see the health of an enemy vehicle at any range, but now it's only a very very short range. So I think it could be quite useful for vehicle drivers and pilots as well. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, especially pilots. When you see a Liberator that's low on health, you're gonna go after that. But if it's full on health and you're slightly hurt, you might not tend to go after it if you also have low ammo. So you know you couldn't bring it down. Okay, okay. we're moving on to the next one. Um, the next one is called EOD HUD. And this actually seems kind of okay. It allows you to detect any enemy explosives within a 5 meter radius. So that's going to be uh, tank mines, uh, it's going to be uh, proximity mines, and C4. I think this one would be very powerful, especially for um, C4 and proximity mines, because usually when you get hit by tank mines, you're traveling at quite a speed so even if you get a five meter warning you can't usually stop in time but if you're infantry and you can detect proximity mines and claymores and whatnot within a five meter radius i think that'd be extremely powerful and if maxes can use implants like uh, the person in the chat asked it would be useful for them as well to spot c4 which is probably one of the biggest max killers um from infantry right now yeah, but the C4 that's used against Maxis is often really fast, and you see it coming. It's just the thing you don't have time to run away from it. Yeah, it wouldn't prevent the, the quick light assault jump overs and things like yeah. that, but um, it would prevent mm. the ones where you know a Max is coming and you see for the door. That's what um, yeah. it would help greatly for Maxis. I, I do enjoy kind of, oh, I see a Max, I'll run to a doorway, then shoot a few bullets like, hello! Then run away, so he comes to the doorway and then detonate when he comes through. So it would definitely help against that. No. Mm. Next up, we have regeneration. That slowly regenerates your health over time when not taking damage. That's what medics are for, really. I mean, if you've got a good medic in the team, you don't need that at all. I guess if you run solo, it could be great. But if you run in a team, you're gonna have those medics, yeah. It might be good for um, light assaults because quite often they are. They can get split off from their team uh, up on rooftops mm. or trying to get behind the enemy and things like that so it could be useful for them but it's also something that if you have a biolab it gives a very similar effect although it, it might be a much much slower for the biolabs because mm. if it's an implant i would expect it to maybe be a bit quicker than the rate that you get from yeah the we don't know how quick it is yet so oh well but it, it seems semi-useful next up we have safe landing this reduces fall damage, allowing you to survive falls from heights twice as high than you normally would. Uh, not quite sure I would ever use that. It seems quite situational, like maybe on a specific base where I know I want to, there's that specific point where from A to B you need to do a big jump or something. Yeah, it would give you um, a bit more mobility, but not that much because as Hood said it, it's very situational where you want to be jumping from quite a height so it, it could give you a little bit more mobility um, but I don't know if it would uh, warrant getting an implant for it okay we're gonna go next up to the implant called sensor shield this makes you undetectable to enemy radar equipment and motion sensors honestly I personally would probably put this thing on in a heartbeat. Yep, same. Yeah, yeah. this is Sounds the greatest very implant of all of these. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bring up my my uh, scout flash comment now. Um, so if you're if you're Vanu out there, or I want you to spend your certs in the proximity radar on the flash. Just do it now. If you're TR or NC, ignore me. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're Vanu, done that. spend your certs in the proximity scanner for the flash. And then, if you're an infiltrator, run into an enemy base, hack a terminal, spawn that, put it in a corner, and it's perfect. You can see everyone, everywhere. You even get experience for the spots. Oh, do you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they added that some time ago, yeah. Oh, excellent. This is you even better for the spot um, an enemy infiltrator with your radar. Yeah, if you spot an enemy with your radar, and I kill him, then you get some experience for that. Yeah, and then I, w I would yeah take the sensor shield to counter my tactic that I've just <laughs> advised. <laughs> yeah, I can see the sensor shield getting a lot of use. And now we move on to the last implant, 
which is called Thermal Reduction, and it prevents you from being highlighted by thermal optics. I think it's a great thing if you're running around with infantry and you see harasses around. Uh, harasses tend to use the um, thermal optics right now, so you would basically be invisible to them. And tanks also, and aircraft for that matter. Yeah, I think it would be quite useful if there was a large enemy air presence, because um, I personally, as a dedicated pilot, on my rocket pods I use thermal, because it makes infantry stand out like a sore thumb, and if they were all using this, it would be very difficult to spot them on thermal, because they wouldn't be bright orange, and you gain less vision in thermal on other things that aren't uh, yeah. player objects. Uh, I, as a Galaxy pilot, I started out into ter the thermal optics for the Bulldogs quite early on, um, and they make a huge difference to the Bulldogs on the Galaxy. So, it, it would be quite useful, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe a bit situational. Um, probably, yeah, like in a defense against air. So, we've talked about the implants, so because we are really, really amazingly live in this show and we talk about stuff as they come up, uh, there has been a little post about the game update 13, which is coming out next week. Um, now, we are going into something which I always have a lot of fun with, which is listener questions. So, if you're listening right now and you have a question that you would like me or my guests to answer, then go into the chat on Iron Pulse Radio, post your question, and we will answer it. So, gentlemen, are you ready for this? Um, bef before you, can I say one more thing? Uh, for sure. Um, and he just cuts out. <laughs> Damn it, there we go. <laughs> what, <laughs> I, what I'd uh, really like to see is the, um, the biolabs being a bit more active in trying to take them, because the tech plants are the only really facility you need at least one of. Um, but it'd be quite nice if, if you're on a continent for each biolab that you own, you can take one implant. That actually sounds like a pretty good idea again i hope that sony is listening to this yes look, uh, another update in 15 minutes by the way biolabs new feature <laughs> anyway oh, yeah, we're that. going into the user questions now and we're going to start with the first question this is going to be coming from meaty and meaty asks again this is for all of you many veteran players are stopping to play the game do you think this is because of lack of metagame, content, or in-game imbalances? I think recently a lot of the overpopulation issues, no matter what side has the overpopulation, it's, it's annoyed a lot of the veteran players, just because you can either be fighting with a huge Zerg and there's not much challenge, or you're getting stomped by a far superior force that there's very little ways to um, combat them, and that I think that's annoyed a lot of the veteran players and a lot of them might have just quit the game because of it. And especially because the, the Vanu had an overpopulation for uh, an extended period of, time, period of time. And that would have annoyed a lot of us TR and NC. And then we have the meta game. The meta game is definitely on a low still, even if they're trying to improve it all the time. There's still does need to get that continent locking etc but I think it's gonna be improved with the um, new continent coming out but it's taking time for me it's the weather it's nice and sunny outside so I'm like you know what maybe, maybe not planet side today maybe go sit outside that might actually be it yeah in the, in so the summer oh. in the summer yeah Oh right, well yeah, that's it. It's just in the summer. It's nicer. In the so summer people... time when the weather is high, you don't play <laughs> yes. planet side, you go outside. Okay. But it rhymes as well, so it must be <laughs> Uh thank you, Meaty, for your question. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is being asked by Oh wow, how do I pronounce this one? Um Znu Zaren and his question or well yeah, it's a question. Recommend one weapon and give your opinion on the NS weapons. Um, recommend one NS weapon, or just a weapon so for just a faction? Just one weapon. Um, <laughs> Ask him to suggest a class, because my mind just exploded with possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, personally, 
I quite like either SMGs or shotguns, mainly because they go across all of your classes, except from shotguns on infiltrators, but it gives you um, a nice broad scope for close quarter combat on all of your classes if you buy either an SMG or a shotgun. Now, obviously shotguns are more powerful in very close ranges, and SMGs more close to short medium ranges, but um, I, I personally would recommend an SMG or a shotgun, but there is quite a broad scope of choice within that, which uh, for shotguns I use an auto shotgun, so for TR that would be the Nighthawk, but it also depends on your playstyle quite greatly. And my opinion on NS weapons is they encourage four factioning quite a lot, especially if you buy them with station cash, they unlock with, with, for all your factions, so if you buy one of them it encourages people to four faction, which is quite quite harmful to the server because your your populations aren't stable they can change quite a lot and the fact that they use white tracers as well that also makes combat quite difficult because quite a lot of the time when I'm under fire I use let, the tracers let me stop you here Hala we kind of okay. need to get through these questions yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bubbling on yeah <laughs> basically white tracers okay so the Nighthawk Hala says the Nighthawk and he says fuck NS guns because they're for four faction scum indeed Okay. <laughs> Any other weapon recommendations? Um, for the VS, I'm going to recommend the Ghost, which is bolt action sniper rifle, for five shots, headshot, that sort of thing. Um, it's mm. one of the cheaper ones, um, and it's cheaper, I think, because it only has a four times scope. Um, I put the four times scope on and a silencer. And it's um, not the most effective, but because you're silent and off the radar, it's one of the more kind of challenging and re uh, rewarding playstyles. So if you want to challenge yourself as a sniper, go for that. And it's just really fun. Yeah, mm. off the radar, yeah, just sneaking around. Crazy. What do you have? Uh, for the NC, I would recommend the Bliss or the Cyclone, the SMGs. They go for every class, and yeah, they're really, really good in uh, almost all situations. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, here we go, this is a good question. This question from uh, Yoshino. He asks, who has the sexiest voice in your faction? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I don't know. The, the player in-game voice? Cause... Uh, I, you think, I think he means the voice of a person, of a player? I'm just, I'm just curious with curries. Curry. Chicken curry? I think for TR, I'd have to say um, a long story. Because it's uh, also very distinguishable, his voice as well. Yeah, if you want to hear his voice, he was in last, uh, last week's episode. And for the NC, who's got the sexiest NC voice, Frizzy? Oh really? I I can't figure out the name for this. There's so many voices that should be mentioned that I'm not gonna mention anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, let's let's take this. Uh, Yamix would like to know, and he wants quick answers, so no blabbling, guys. The lattice, good Boo. or bad? Good, I don't but like it, it either. Needs it needs changes. It could be good, but yeah, as Frezzy said, I personally I think it needs more roots. It feels too directed right now. Mm. Yeah. Okay, oh, and another sorry. question? I'm not quite sure who this is from. I think it might be from Hobo with a Chain Gun. He likes, considering overall consistent performance, which outfit would you pick as first among equals? Is this which outfit is slightly better balanced, maybe, or like slightly unbalanced no. in their favor? No, or? I, th I, th I think I think he wants to know which outfit do you like best. Ah, oh, well, Vanu. <laughs> I, I no, that's Vanu. not an outfit. <laughs> oh, outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a faction. <laughs> um, I don't know. I quite like know. I quite like that's FFS. Good. Like when when I'm playing. Uh, I think you are 
not pressing your button again. Ah, right. Sorry. There we go. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> this is this is a repeating theme for me. Um, oh, and I have to edit all of this later on. And he's not doing it again. No, I, I, I was I was doing it that time. So maybe it's not the push talk key. I think it is. <laughs> anyway, so you really like FFS? Yeah, because like. And he's not talking. <laughs> I got the car. Anyway, okay, uh, so he really likes FFS, and we're leaving it at that. Frizzy, what's your favorite outfit? This is really gonna sound strange with actually Hala in here, but I like the 501st G because I've seen them recently in game, and uh, I like fighting against them. I like you now as well. Uh, I I personally feel I I have great respect for IP. Because I see them running very organized ground squads, and recently they've also been running uh, organized air squads as well. And Aww, they do shucks. They, they do great things for the server too with their with the whole Reddit Woodman Live and um, the Woodman Teamspeak server as well. So I think yeah, I, have I have great respect for IP. Guy. They have this handsome guy. Name starts with a K. <laughs> anyway, okay. The, Can so I those change the my favorite outfits? Can I change my answer for the sexiest voice on Woodman? Uh, sure. Uh, begins with a K. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was meant to be related, didn't really roll off the tongue, never mind. Ah, uh, uh, okay, we got it, we got it. Well, he's not only handsome, he's got a sexy voice too, who could this devil be? <laughs> who knows? Anyway, let's uh, get to the last question. Um, we're going to go... Oh, this is actually a pretty cool question. Uh, Yamix again. He asks, uh, it's, uh, he, he asks a short question, but I'm going to make it a bit longer. Would you like to have naval combat in the game? Yes, definitely. No, it would be a bit tedious, I reckon, for the naval units. Um, but the, they could make it quite interesting. It's interesting if it was a standalone thing. Um, but I think naval combat would be a lot more of a patience game, and people in FPS games are not patient people, so it would not end up well. Well, you can have fast boots also, and uh, then you could have islands for infantry to fight on, and bigger ships. Yeah, but with naval combat, like, if you have an island with infantry on it, then you just go around it using the huge ocean kind of thing. You're not ever... Oh, he stopped again. Oh dear. I, I am still pressing this by the way, so I'm not quite sure why it's not working. Um, question. But yeah, I, I I think it was a bit tedious um, due to the, the lack of strategy, like, or the overabundance of strategy really. Like, you would win when you wait for your friends and just team up. Uh, kind of a bit mm. like how Esamir is with tanks. Uh, Esamir is a lot more zergy. If you want to fight well on SME, you just build up tanks and build up more tanks as you go from base to base. Um, so naval combat would just be that. Well, with naval combat, you could have boats where you ferry away with infantry to islands where the bigger bases are that the infantry have to take over. So then you couldn't actually drive with the, like you now have tanks driving up to the bases. You can't have the ships actually drive up to the bases. So that could be a kind of cool feature. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we're going to end this here with one last question, which is just going to be very quick. Describe the other factions in one or two words. Hood. Do I have to go first for this one? Yes. I need to think. Um, okay. okay, then we're going with Hala. Um, for Vanu, I'd say organization between outfits and that's for three words you're out oh <laughs> no i'm just joking <laughs> okay so for vanu organization between outfits and for nc i'd say organization within outfits okay and frizzy uh for tr a lot of puppies for the one is um Annoying sights. <laughs> and Hood, you had enough time to think. Come up with something good. Okay, for TR, it's too many bullets. And for NC, I'm just going to say 
I don't like their armor really. Like the, everything just has more armor and stuff. Like their tank columns are too good, but too much armor. Yeah, too much armor. Too much armor. Alrighty, and with that, we are actually at the end of this uh, week's, or well, or this episode of Woodman Life, and we're going to finish this off with me giving each of my three guests, uh, first of all, my thanks for showing up. Thank you guys very much for being here. Uh, we had a pretty good discussion going on, I think, and a lot to laugh. Also, a few technical problems, but I think they added to the charm of this whole thing. And, you know, I mean, I am a Vanu, so maybe it was just me trying to enlighten you a bit, and you guys didn't take to it too well. Anyway, we're going to finish this off with uh, me giving each of you 10 seconds uh, to say whatever you want. Just whatever you want. You can say it. It's, it's, it's there. People are listening. So, Hood, your 10 seconds to do whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Go. Um, this game is really good. It's like an army sandbox. You need to be part of an army, though. Come join Tor or anyone else on the IP or just generally an outfit in general. Woo! Planet side! Scout radars. <laughs> Scout radar flashes. And Frizzy, you get 10 seconds to say whatever you ever wanted to say. If you want to ask someone to marry you, now is the time. Go. Play NC or go home. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> to the, the point. Good. Touché, good <laughs> that's sir. It. And Hala, you are going to end this episode of Woodman Life. Your 10 seconds live now. I'd like to thank Clyde, our host, for organizing these Woodman Lives. And I'd like to say... FREEDOM! I'm Scottish, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty weird hearing a TR shout about freedom, but that's what you get at Woodman Life. So, thanks to my guests, and thanks to my listeners very, very much for being here. And uh, I had a lot of fun, and I hope you will join me in the next episode of Woodman Life. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.